All right, welcome back to the Lua introduction. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about math operations. But first, we find ourselves back in the old script from the last lecture. And what I advise you to do right now is uh, each time a new lecture starts, I would advise you to simply comment out the old print statements that we use, because otherwise the output is going to get very cluttered very soon. And I'm going to be doing that going forward. Now, I really do advise you to do this because for example, in this lecture, we're going to have a lot of print statements. And then in the next lecture, we're going to have a few more. And uh, because the order of operations, so the order when each of the scripts is executed is not always the same. You can't reliably tell when what output is going to show up. Therefore, I advise to print those out. However, you can, of course, simply delete the dashes and then it's going to print out whatever is written in there. So that's just a short little thing. And I've also already created the math operations script. Uh, I'm sure that you can do this, right? It's just over the server script service plus and then the script, rename it, and then you're ready to go. Right. So math operations. So I already hear some of you sighing, saying, oh, math again. Don't worry about it. This is not crazy complicated. These are the just the basic operation that you can do. So the first thing that you can do, of course, is um, addition. And the way we do addition is actually very simple. What we simply do is we say, well, let's have a variable. So for example, we call this addition. And we just say 20 plus 5. That's it. That's already addition. Uh, there don't need to be spaces in between necessarily. Right, you can also write it closer together. That's a preference thing more than anything else. And let's just uh, print this out and see what we can see. So 20 plus 5 equals uh, addition, right? And then let's save this and run. 20 plus 5 equals 25. Yeah, I could have told you that one. But once again, this is, this is the easy step, right? Addition, not very complicated, but still very useful. Of course, you can also do this with variables, right? So 20 could be a variable. So it could be... Um, you know, add one is equal to 20, right? And then we can do this one, for example, right? And this, of course, works just the same. 20 plus five, uh, five equals 25, because in the variable add one, 20 was written into it, right? The next thing, of course, would be subtraction. Now, subtraction is simply as easy as addition. It is simply, let's say, for example, 23 minus 30. Um, now, the first thing you're going to think about, wait a second, but that would be less than zero. And of course, that is less than zero, because we can also have negative numbers, right? So this one would be negative seven in this case. So in sub it's not a sub subtraction, actually, negative seven is written in there. And that works totally fine. And you can work with the negative numbers just as you do with positive numbers. That just works. So Lua just works that out on its own. Then, of course, multiplication. Uh, one thing that's always interesting. So let's say multi is equal to, let's say, 5 times 40. And let's print that out as well. So the times is simply going to be a star here, right? And let's write that together again. Uh, that's uh, 40 is mu equals multi. There you go. And let's print that out. And that is, of course, once again, 5 times 40 is equal to 200. I'm sure that that is correct. No, of course it's correct. Right. And then the last thing that you've probably already heard of, is, that's, of course, division. Also not crazy. Uh, division, let's do something like 20 divided by 5 right now. So this would be 20 divided by 5 equals division. Uh, and this is, of course, simply 4, right? But what happens, for example, if we have something that doesn't evenly go in there, what happens then? Well, we're going to see that's actually going to be 6.6666 something. Because uh, the because 3 doesn't go evenly to 20, we're actually going to get a the well float representation of the division there, which is very interesting because when you if you come from different languages, then you would actually expect this to simply be a six. So usually it just cuts off everything else or seven, depending on what language, but usually it would be a whole number. So a integer instead of a number with a decimal point and then stuff after it. 
there's also something uh, very interesting that comes after division, which is the modulo or the remainder operator. This is uh, so this is usually used in things like cryptography. Now this is of course just one of the examples where this actually can be used. But in our case, what it can be used for very uh, effectively is, for example, for well, uh, evaluating random numbers or evaluating whether or not a number is, uh, so for example, divisible by something, right? So if we say uh, 20 and then we make this percentage sign, uh, let's say 6 first, then we're going to have 20, oh, 20 uh, percentage 6. So this is percenti, uh, percentage. Uh, sign is the remainder operator and then we're going to do remainder and this is going to come out to two now the first thing they're going to say is how is it two well the idea here is that how often does you actually divide it so you say 20 divided by six well that doesn't really work the closest number to that is is 18 and then you just say well 20 minus 18 and the remainder is two so the remainder is very useful for example if we say divided by so if you say remainder 2 then this is actually going to be a zero because there is no remainder right 20 can be evenly divided by 2 and this is what i say um this is what i said if you want to uh, look for a, a even number right so there you can see 21 would be a 1 so you can very easily just ask hey uh, is this equal to zero or is it not equal to zero and then you know if a certain number is divisible by two or is even in that case right there is one more thing and that is going to be increment and decrement now what does that mean well that basically means adding by one or subtracting by one now, of course you might just say well let's just add by one here that's easy isn't enough but there are some things in some other languages you could use something like this number plus plus and then usually you also have a semicolon, but in this case we don't need this. Number plus plus, what is, what would that do? Well, this would actually just increment or plus one this number. Now, as you can see, this is actually an error. This doesn't work because this is not supported in Lua, right? So number one doesn't work. And um, also number zero zero doesn't work either. So this would be the decrement. However, what does work is number plus equals one, right? So this simply takes whatever is written in number and adds whatever is written in here and writes it back into number. So after this line, number is now six. Uh, we can also do number minus equals one. And then of course, number now equals five again after this line. And uh, this is actually something that was added in Lua U. So this is not supported in the Lua 5.1 version, which Roblox is actually based on. So this is something they added uh, on their own. Uh, very useful to actually have this be, uh, because this is just an easier way to write this. Yeah, so those are some of the basic math operations. And uh, as you well know, within mathematics, as soon as you have those very basic things that you can use, the so basic operations, then you can all of a sudden you get really powerful. And uh, yeah, we're gonna build up some more things that we can do with Lua. And with each lecture that you're gonna build up, you're gonna build up tools that you can then use in order to solve problems for the, well, for programming a, a Roblox game, right? So this was it with the math operations. Um, I hope that it was useful to you. If there are any questions, as always, feel free to ask. And uh, yeah.